The original jumper configuration you see here on the motherboard uh, is set to 66 megahertz. You see there's three jumpers and there's a, a matrix of uh, possibilities for all the different front side bus speeds right there screened on the board. In the next picture you can see that I have changed it. All of the jumpers have basically inverted. They've gone from like 1, 2 to 2, 3 or from 2, 3 to 1, 2 and that sets it up for 75 megahertz which is not a typical configuration but that is how you overclock. I'm running some other tests to make sure that the system is picking it up the way I expect. And there it is, internal CPU speed, 262.4. Ooh, but this is a 233 megahertz. So, all indications are good. And we've got some overclocking going on here. Um, let's see if I can run speed sys. Okay, oh, there we go. Look at that, MMX266. That's, that's exactly what I wanted to see. I've got an earlier uh, picture of the same screenshot. And much faster. Oh, the colors are so harsh. This next image shows the data about the CPU before I did the overclocking. This is from a DOS benchmarking tool that identifies your chipset, your memory speeds, your graphics, everything, um, and then gives you some you know, comparative metrics about it. This shows 233 megahertz. Now there is something else this shows that's kind of interesting. The memory speed is slower in this one than in the other shots from after the overclocking. I didn't expect any change to memory speeds. Um, I guess the memory is simply faster than what the CPU needs. So when the CPU sped up, it took advantage of the additional speed, kind of like some overhead, not overhead, but headroom um, in the memory. So I got faster memory now and a faster CPU.